Hey there, I'm Austin, head of content and community at Fritz AI. Today, I wanna to show you something fun you can do in Lens Studio with the most popular and accessible machine learning task for lens creators, style transfer. Style transfer is a computer vision technique that allows us to recompose the content of one image in the style of another. So if you've ever imagined what a photo or video stream might look like if it were painted by a famous artist, style transfer is what turns this into a reality. Training a style transfer model is really simple, especially for creators just getting started with ML. Uh, this is because training one of these models only requires one dataset image called a style image, uh, as opposed to other ML tasks like object detection and segmentation, which usually require thousands of dataset images. Implementing a style transfer model in Lens Studio is also pretty simple, but I found myself wondering what else is possible beyond applying a given style to a full camera scene. So I'm going to explore that in this tutorial. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to train a style transfer model with Fritz AI, export the model to Lens Studio as a standalone model file, and then use Lens Studio's segmentation template to apply the style transfer model to just the background, leaving the subject as it is. It will look something kind of like a semi-virtual background like this. First, we'll need to train our style transfer model with Fritz AI. To do this, we'll need to create a new Fritz AI project and choose Style Transfer as our project type. You can do that over in the left-hand drop-down menu in the web app. Once we've created this project and given it a name, we can immediately set up a model training configuration by clicking the Training tab in the left-hand menu and then clicking Train a new model. The first thing we'll need to do for this configuration is choose and upload a style image. Now this is the style image which will be the input to our model as it trains. Now something to keep in mind here, not all style images are equal. Our style transfer guide, which is linked in the description below, has some best practices and examples to help guide your selection. But at a high level, style images with large geometric patterns, bold contrasting color palettes, and strong edges and textures will work really well. Additionally, images that are roughly 512 by 512 in size tend to do best. I've gone ahead and chosen this free to use image from Unsplash uh, as my style image and resized it appropriately. Just make sure that for whatever image you choose, you have the appropriate license and or permission. Next, we'll wanna tweak these adjustable parameters that you see here to our liking. Again, there's more info in the link in the description below, but here's a really quick look at the four sliders. The first is style. This slider controls how much of a style is borrowed from the style image we just uploaded. The higher this number, the more stylized your output images and videos will be. Second, content. This slider works as the inverse of the style parameter, essentially. It controls how much of the original camera scene content is maintained. The higher this number, the more your output images and videos will maintain their original content. Three, variation. The higher this value, the smoother your stylized images will be. This may wash out small textures. And then fourth, stability. The higher this value, the more the model will attempt to stabilize videos specifically. This can also have the effect of washing out smaller textures when you set this value higher. I'd recommend looking through some of the examples in the guide linked below, but be aware that there is a certain amount of trial and error involved. So defining what you want your final effect to look like is important here. For this model, I wanted to dial down the style so that the content of the scene would remain largely intact. I chose two for the style weight, four for the content weight, and five each for variation and stability. It's worth experimenting a bit to get the hang of how these sliders work on different style images. Now, after we've settled on these parameters, we can set a training budget. We recommend two hours for style transfer models. Anything more rarely seems to improve the trained model, but feel free to experiment here as well. And then we hit train. That's it. We'll get an email when our model has finished training successfully. Now when we come back, I'll walk you through how I implemented the style transfer model inside Lens Studio's segmentation template. Hey again. So I just got that email letting me know that the model has successfully trained and is ready for us to use. Uh, now normally, when accessing a trained model for Lens Studio, I'd recommend using the project template. 
this is usually the quickest way to get started and comes with an ML component or an ML controller in some cases already set up for you. But here, because we want to implement the model inside another template, we'll need to download just the model file itself and then implement it manually in Lens Studio. From the models page, go ahead and download the model file, should be an Onyx ONNX file format, and then go ahead and launch Lens Studio, open a new segmentation template project, and we'll be able to see right away that this template already has the human subject separated, aka segmented, from the background of the scene. And with that separation, we have a very simple heart AR effect currently occupying the background. So what we need to do here, in essence, is replace this tiled heart AR effect with the output of the style transfer model. The first step is to add a new ML component object that will contain the model we just trained and downloaded. Select the file we just downloaded. Uh, we can just click import in the first dialog box as Fritz AI takes care of this configuration under the hood. Note here that the ML component is automatically nested under the camera object in the top left panel. This allows the component to communicate with the primary camera. Next, let's look at the ML component configuration. Upon adding the style transfer model to the ML component, we don't have anything set in terms of the input and output textures, so we need to set those. First, we change the value of the input texture from none to device camera texture. This will feed the camera input to your model. Second, we create an output texture by clicking the Create Output Texture button under the Outputs tab. Lens Studio will automatically create this texture. Notice here that nothing yet has changed in our lens preview. This is because the template segmentation controller is the primary object that's communicating with the camera slash scene. To change that, I'll need to change the segmentation controller so that instead of applying these hearts to the background, it's instead applying the style transfer model's output that we just set up. To configure the segmentation controller, I'll complete a somewhat similar process as I did with the ML component. Namely, I'll configure both an input, i.e. an image, and an output, in this case, a post effect. Because I ultimately want the segmented background to display the real life scene with the artistic style overlaid on top of it, I want the segmentation controller to use the device camera as its input source. So to do this, I'll change the image to device camera texture, much like I did in the last step. I'll also uncheck Use Background Color, which eliminates the pale pink that was serving as the background color palette. I'm not actually sure if this really does anything for this use case, but there seemed to be no reason to keep it, so I just went ahead and unchecked it. I was kind of startled the first time I saw the tiled panel of the human subject floating in the background, but upon a closer inspection, this actually makes sense. With the hearts in the background color stripped away, the device camera is simply capturing this person the subject, against a neutral background, and the script is configured to include this floating tile effect. We'll want to uncheck this tiled option, and when we do, we'll see this unaltered preview image. But not to worry, the next step is where all the pieces come together. Now the final step took me a little while to figure out and didn't seem quite as intuitive as the others, uh, and while there might be other ways to apply the style transfer effect to the isolated background that I'm not aware of, I got it working by adding a post effect that leverages the ML component. I'll also add this in the segmentation controller object. Once we enable a post effect, we can configure its texture and alpha value, the intensity of the effect. Then we add the output texture of the ML component as the post effect texture. You can test this out in a number of ways, but my go-to is to just send the lens to my device to test it out or use my webcam. So what's next? Uh, for lens creators who regularly work with things like 3D graphics and other immersive effects, this segmentation plus style transfer lens could serve as a really cool starting point for some interesting, uh, unique, and creative experiences. If you'd like to give this a shot with your own style transfer model, you can get started really quickly with a Fritz AI account. Our support for SnapML and Lens Studio is in beta and free to use at the time of recording this tutorial. Your account will give you access to our model building studio, uh, where I built the style transfer model, as well as a growing collection of ready to use ML powered project templates. We'd love to see what you come up with. Until next time, take care everyone.